never any doubt that he was going to greet us with love and remember us. You could see him when you looked there, he's peering down, looking, 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 and then he, suddenly he realizes, yes, this is them, and the body language is love. Ace. Um, oh, well, I agree, absolutely. We knew him so well. We knew he was running to us with excitement and love, and we felt exactly the same for him. But after just under a year, this is a wild animal. He has been in Africa, wild. Did you ever worry that he may revert to his natural instincts? Because he was so happy, George was doing such a good job rehabilitating him. Mm -hmm. and he had other lions. They did have problems with the wild lions in the area, but had been so successful. Um, if he'd been frustrated or hurt or hungry, I still don't think he would have um, ever attacked us. Mm -hmm. But because um, the, his circumstances were so good, mm -hmm. um, he was a very happy, contented lion. Well, let's go mm -hmm. back a year. Uh, you, it's extraordinary, and most people just go, what do you mean you can buy a lion in Harrods? That's just, yeah. but there was an era where exotic animals were traded like that. It was, it was something that is no longer possible, and rightly so. Hmm. Um, trading of animals still continues, and, but in a different, for different reasons, because they're spreading gene pools. Hmm. They're not trading animals so that they've got exhibits. Hmm. So, but in those days, you could, you could buy animals anything, anywhere. So you did take pity on him, you did adopt him. Tell me about the pampered life Christian enjoyed in London? <laughs> well, we lived on the King's Road. We're talking, you know, the late 60s, swinging yeah. 60s. He'd drive around in a car? Yes. Did he have a cat? What sort of character was, was he? He was, had the most beautiful, even <laughs> nature. That's a great shot, isn't it? <laughs> oh, did you actually, did you drive around London? Well, well, not very, very often, really. no, not very often. Really, we looked after him very well. And it took a lot of time, and we protected him for a lot of things. And we took him for a walk every afternoon, but in fact, we didn't show him off. Um, mm. And that was partly why it was so successful. We really looked after him beautifully. What sort of intellect do you think he was, in terms of lion intelligence, one of the brightest and most Oh, I think he was, he was smart. Mm. He also had, because he had all this attention from us, and friends, and look, this is him at a restaurant. I mean, that was set up, but it's yeah. fun. He it's, didn't live like that. No, it, but that was just a fun thing. But you see, here's someone, uh, you know, and even with children, very comfortable, very safe. People always say that you've got to be very careful with children. He was trusting, and um, this is his first night in Africa, you know, so mm. thinking about it. But no, he was a very smart lion. He had all this attention. And of course, then he went to George Adamson, the absolute guru who knew more about lions than anyone in the world. The man of, on whom uh, Born Free. Uh, Born Free was based. So and he, he said goes, mm, he's the one. He mm. said he's a very, very smart lion. And a man with great experience. Yes. And he had a very even temperament mm -hmm. and was very cooperative. Is that George there? Now, that's no. Christian. No. At the, the last time we saw him, when he was completely, he'd, he had mated successfully, had litter. And this is him fully grown, maybe 500, 600 pounds, which is huge for a lion. But look at the size of him. Wow. And there he is still totally trusting with George. Mm. And George fell in love with him as well. Mm. George was a sort of lion whisperer, really, wasn't yes. he? He was just totally magical. But with when you went back 12 months later to visit Christian, uh, George had said, look, don't expect too much here. Uh, and we haven't seen him for months. Mm. How is it that he appeared only the day before back on the, this is this reserves hundreds this is 450 of square, square miles yes yeah. so he yeah. just appeared mm. and we do we take into that he just appeared after not having been seen for months the day before you arrive are we talking any sort of telepathy here am i stretching it well people who knows yes who knows well, people that talk happened about the next visit as well he yes. appeared again and he hadn't been seen for a while because one of the big dangers trying to socialize him with his own wild um uh, other wild lions don't like people encroaching, that's when they can be killed. Yes. Well, this is one of the things. When, when we have the opportunity, this is, look at that, isn't that fab fabulous with Ace? When we had the opportunity to take him to George Adamson, I mean, George said to us, look, you, you know, you guys are taking a chance because he's fifth generation domesticated. It's not like Elsa, who was born in Africa, who knew the smells of Africa. Here was Christian, whose mother had come from... Um, 
Rotterdam, Rotterdam and the Syria. father from Jerusalem, born in Ilfracombe. So we've got a Dutch Jewish lion born in <laughs> England, raised by Aussies, going back to Kenya. So we've got quite a little cocktail here. <laughs> and um, anyhow, he, you know, we got him out there. George took a look at him and obviously we're mm. rather woolly as well at that stage. Christian had come from winter. He had that very heavy coat. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it took a day or so before George could... He said, look, no, he's going to be all right. He's got, he's, he's fine. He's going to be fine. When were, you had this visit with him, you saw him again after that, when? Yes. Well, the last time was in 74, by which point... That he, was you. I didn't go there. Right. Mm -hmm. was, but we, we had another one. But then I went back, and um, that was the last time he was ever seen. And he was, that was it. He was in the wild then. And he, did he recognise you? Oh, yes. Oh, still. Same. But... He never was seen again. He was never, there was never any story of a terrible trophy or anything like that. He just went and it was a complete success. Because as you can imagine, people are making up things. So oh, you, yes. if he was never seen again. He yes. went off into this massive reserve yes. with his pride yes. and lived happily. Yes. We don't know how long king. he lived for. Mm. No. Um, why did you name him Christian? <laughs> Ace did. <laughs> Ace? But he's 30 years, I said to John the other day. How did he get such a cool name? He said, <laughs> you named him, Christian. <laughs> yeah. the, the amazing ability, and I know in the last several years, you must have spoken to people with great experience, not only George, other people with lions. Lions aren't supposed to behave like that. Why do you think Christian did? I'm not sure they don't behave like that. I think oh. they're wonderful. You see, they're, they're a pride animal. If the cruelest thing you can do to a lion is to have it by itself. Because it's lonely. If you see them in Africa, they're always lying in piles with all different generations all on top of each mm. other. They're very tactile. And so if you take a lion by itself, as we had, well, we became his pride. Absolutely. And tigers and leopards are much more solitary, so that would be much more difficult. Mm. We were just his family. Mm. When he got to Africa, I'm sure it was a bit of a cultural shock. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, <laughs> Um, he was introduced to another lion called Boy, who had also had, had been brought in and, and rescued. Boy has a very interesting history because he and his sister Girl were given to George Adamson. Now, they're, they're interesting names, Boy and Girl. Somebody was right on the mark. Yeah.